In this other exercise, uh, you can start by using my uh, own composition so you can save time uh, arranging the different layers and editing the Photoshop file. But uh, what we are going to do basically is to animate a camera to uh, be able to focus on different aspects of a, a canvas, of a, a composition that has been created from a multi-layer Photoshop. If you download the file uh, parallax scroll that you can find in Canvas and you uncompress the, the folder, you will see uh, different uh, comic books uh, pages. Uh, I use it for this composition, this, uh, um, this picture, this um, graphic that is from this same comic book. But you can, uh, if you want, uh, set up, do a, uh, a test using any of uh, these other images or trying to get a large resolution uh, comic book uh, page or any kind of uh, picture of large resolution you want to work with. The next step, uh, once you are in Photoshop, consists in isolate the different uh, objects that you want to split in layers, okay? So in this case, uh, you, will, you won't see the difference because obviously here uh, all the layers are uh, displayed, but if you go to uh, layers, where it is, layers, here, you see that uh, I already split the different objects. So here we have uh, this character, this other character, this one, this one, this one, okay, uh, stains, uh, here I didn't really did a very good job with the wall, it was very difficult because I was just cloning, what you have to do obviously is to replace this with another texture, so that would work better, okay, so and the same thing here, I didn't really uh, make that much effort with that. This, as usually, I, I always recommend to allocate one as a background reference. This is the original file, okay, but you won't use this one. The reason it has numbers is because when you have compositions with a lot of layers, it is always a good idea to try to um, tell the, the person who is opening the, the file how close to the camera is the object. So that way, if you allocate different numbers, it would be an indicative of the depth level or something like that. You would observe as well that it's not that easy as just, um, you know, select with the lasso, cut and paste with the Photoshop. You might need to do some kind of, uh, you know, reconstruction to try to, um, uh, well, uh, because uh, you might not be uh, visualizing entirely this character, but you really want to reconstruct the part that is hidden in case that the camera goes and you know you have to display that. Once you open the file, what you see is that I imported the composition as, uh, um, once you open the composition, if you decide to go and use my own composition instead of creating yours from zero is that uh, the, all the layers have been already imported and uh, they are just, uh, you know, representing different layers in the composition. The most important in relation to that is to import the file that Photoshop that you have constructed, this one, for example, and when you import that, it needs to be imported as composition. This is the most important thing, okay? Once you have the composition here, R3D. In order to that, go to columns and you have to go to switches. Now I'm going to work only with the camera one. Okay, I'm going to reduce the resolution. I'm going to select one view. And as you would see is that uh, now the camera seems to be allocated in that object. Okay, this uh, priest at the end of the composition. So my advice would be to delete the camera, create a new camera, 
don't worry so much about the properties of the camera because you can change them any moment so uh, then when you display these properties you would see many different properties but the ones we are going to animate principle is only position and point of interest so i select the stopwatch it will create automatically a, a keyframe which is linear type we can change that later so don't worry uh, about it okay uh, in case you want to animate these others you can also select them okay just be sure that creates here as well a keyframe okay so now when you move uh, here the camera using C C remember just pressing the key uh, C you can now decide to focus on this element okay but in the general one you have general then you go to this one and then for example in this one uh, you go to uh, the one more okay more in the background okay okay so in order to see uh, to work the fulfill for example here if you want the fulfill to work you might uh, first be sure that in the camera options uh, the fulfill is selected so the fulfill here should be select it okay and then still you you won't probably see that because this depends on the aperture uh, the blur level if you want to exaggerate that you can exaggerate it at least until you see something and when you see that you can then later readjust it to 100 okay you will need to uh, create a uh, okay another uh, a larger aperture okay and then later now i can reduce the level to 100 okay okay so uh let's see mm -mm -mm. okay so if you see now for example you see that in, in fact what it is unfocused is the character are the characters and not the background and that is why you have to adjust the focus distance to that uh, to that layer okay you can do it just checking the numbers seeing how far it is from the camera and adjusting that you can adjust until you see it clear that would be fine but probably it's easier if you just set the focus to the layer now the problem is that uh, actually two are two different layers so we are going to be able to adjust the focus to only one in case they are uh, two different distances so you have to just go to the layer and then you go to camera options and in camera options you do set focus distance to layer if you select link focus distance to layer what you will do is to create an expression that uh, makes uh, you know adjustable that uh, focus distance so if you later move the object the camera automatically would adjust the uh, uh, the focus which is very useful when you are for example uh, following an object within the narration with a particular camera in this case however the objects are not moving so we are going to use set focus distance to layer so you have to select the camera and the the layers you want to focus and then you go to camera and uh, set focus distance to layer and you see that because they are very close it's practically like we we are adjusting at the same time both okay now with that if you go and uh, you see the rest of the composition 
or you see that this is the part that is focused and the depth of field can be still adjusted by uh, changing the parameters of the camera, creating more aperture, okay, which is the equivalent of the F, okay. So remember, more aperture, less F, and therefore more easy to uh, create a swallowed effect. Okay, so you have this way you can create a uh, more exaggerated depth of field. This would be affected as well uh, with uh, the camera properties. So if you change the camera properties, and uh, remember the uh, lesson we talked before, um, if you change to a field of view that is uh, narrower, okay, and therefore it's a focal length that is larger, then it will be easier to create this effect, okay? But there will be other elements, other consequences in the use of that camera because it will be a, a totally different camera, okay? So this is uh, just as an example. Now you can play with this composition and you can uh, create your own um, canvas and, and animate the different cameras using, you know, any animation you want. Just now play with this.